Hi everyone, it's Finola Howard here for How Great Marketing Works and this is Ask Finola How. I just had a little fright a second ago because I had just set my alarm and I'd forgotten that 12 o'clock is my, you know, when you're in different um, buckets in your life that you think of different things at different times. And I had said to myself, I must start a kind of a mid-morning routine for myself. So my alarm just went off to go for a stretch and a walk. So I just had to cancel that. I'm here with you again now. So, okay, so let's get started. This is, what is it? It's episode 21 of Ask Finola How. And this is all about real questions from real entrepreneurs, okay? Because I think that's the best way that I can help you guys. So let me recap for you this week's question. And this week's question is, if you've identified a potential ideal client, what's the best way to reach out to them and say, hey, I think I can help you, okay? So this is from an established entrepreneur and let me share with you what they've said. I work with clients in two different formats, one of which is a retainer. I have a limited amount of spots for this because the relationship has to be right and has to be the right fit for me to deliver the level of service that I want. Firstly, I applaud this entrepreneur because it's a very conscious approach. You've really thought about how you're structuring your business and what makes sense for you. So that's really good. So the rest of her story is this. And so far, my clients have come to me and I have been really lucky in that 85% have been an excellent fit. But because I'm stepping up the level of service and I'm really wanting to make the fit even better, I want to be more proactive about choosing the customer. I'm fine when it comes to connecting and building a relationship. What I struggle with is the next step to reach out to somebody when I see that possibly we'd be a good fit to work together. And I think that I could help them. It's the practical aspects of taking that over the line to the conversation that says, hey, this is how I could help. So this entrepreneur wants help with this stage. Okay, so here are my thoughts on this, okay? The first thing that I would say to you, and I have three really core ones for you today. The first thing I'd ask is, have you clarified, and this is a really good message for everybody, have you clarified exactly what makes a good fit for you? So have you actually made a list of the things of what is the best perfect client for you? What are the attributes of a perfect client for you? And what are the attributes of a bad client for you? Now, perfect fit client could be things like, and I mean as specific as stuff like maybe how old they are, maybe what industry they're in, what their needs are, what are the specific needs they are that are the perfect fit for you. And going into that detail, if there are larger organizations like a multinational, maybe it's what department they're in, maybe it's the type of manager or leader in that organization, that specific leader, is that a specific leader that would be a champion for you? So what I'd be looking for is, what are the specific criteria that makes a perfect fit for you? An important part of the process. And actually I'd be listing them and profiling them. And, I, and this actually leads you to something kind of much more interesting actually, because when you are able to clarify exactly this perfect fit, these sweet spots for you, that's what I like to call them, sweet spots, and say to yourself, I need these five sweet spots ticked in order for me to work with my, in order for that to be a perfect fit client for me. And also, I think it's really important to say, what are the things that make them a really bad fit? Who do you not want to work with? What's the profile of them? And the same questions apply. Is there an industry you don't want to work in that's not, that you can't serve, you can't help? Is there what are the things that make them a bad fit? Because when you have both sides of the coin, it makes it easier to actually choose what's right for you. So that's the first piece. Spend some time to going, what's a sweet spot and what's a sour spot, okay? For your business in terms of client. You take that, it's kind of a, a separate but combined e exercise to the customer profiling, which we did in episode seven. And I'm always advocating customer profiling, as you know, but do that checklist. What's a sweet spot fit and what's a sour spot uh, fit for you, okay? And what's interesting about this, of thinking in terms of sweet spots, is that it allows you to build 
like a customer relationship management system. It allows you to profile more efficiently, more effectively, and figuring out how do you nurture someone along so they actually take the right boxes at the appropriate time, okay? And we can talk about more about that later. But so the next thing is, so actually CRM system is really interesting because I would say to you that the next best spot for you to do is to actually see if you can find those types of clients in your area or wherever you're located, more than geographic area, but in your catchment area, geographic or otherwise, can you actually list the exact customers that take those sweet spots for you? So even if it's down to, if you are a smaller business, you might be doing it in like a simple Excel sheet that says, you know, I keep coming across this person. I think they'd be a really good fit for me. List them in an Excel spreadsheet. And then across the top of your Excel spreadsheet, list, our, list your sweet spots and see if they are ticking and how many people fit your sweet spot. That's really interesting. And when you start to think like this, you are actually building a customer relationship management system so that when you start to scale your business, you can stay, scale that profiling of nurturing people through this process so that you know how many you have in your prospect list when you get to that point. So then, so we've established this kind of, do we know what's a sweet spot? Do we know what it's a sour spot? Are we actually being very specific about them and matching a target client list for that? So then what happens next? Okay, then what happens next is you actually trigger your marketing funnel. Now, the marketing funnel is a very interesting one because most people get scared by it because Sometimes it's hard to understand how to relate it to your business and all of these things. But I like to think of the marketing funnel as a very nice, natural journey that you can entice people into your business with. Uh, more than that, it can be a conscious journey that you bring your customers through, your target clients through. It is efficient. It is conscious of both sides of parties in this conversation. It is respectful because it acknowledges that we have to have patience on this journey and that we need to wait for the appropriate next step. It makes us much more uh, natural in our dealings with clients because we're not in a rush to close. We're actually much more patient and able to listen to our customers. And we are truly able to listen to our customers. We can serve them better and we will find unique opportunities to relate to them better. And how I think of the sales and marketing funnel is like this. There are generally five steps in a marketing funnel, okay? And instead of being quite intellectual about it, I like to make it really simple. And the five steps for you are first to be seen. Sorry, I tell a lie. First to be there. Second to be seen. Third to be considered. Fourth to be chosen. And lastly to be championed. So if you think about this, when you're trying to grow your audience and you're trying to grow your customers and figure out the right ones for yourself. Well, first of all, you went and you found your sweet spots and your sour spots. You identified the ones that you wanted to go with. And then you sit down after your profiling and you say, where is this customer? Where are they so I can be there? So be where your customers are. This is your first step in your marketing funnel. Be where your customers are, be there. Okay, so I know where they are. I've gone there. I've gone to the groups. I've gone to the trade shows. I've gone to wherever they are, real or virtual. Okay, the second step has to be seen. How can you be seen in those places? Can you be seen by your content? Can you be seen by your trade show stand? Can you be seen by um, things that you're saying in the meeting room? How can you be seen? Okay, mostly this is content for most businesses so that you actually start it is about building brand awareness okay so being seen is generally about being about brand awareness and brand awareness is about consistently communicating communicating to your target audience okay so then we figured out okay the content that this type of customer would love to see and would start to see me is x y and z okay these are your core pillars for how you communicate into the marketplace the next thing um, that I would think about in a marketing funnel is how to be considered, okay? So 
how can they do more than just see you but actually want to reach out to you so being considered is your customer your target customer reaching out to you how do we entice them to reach out and we often entice them to reach out by what people will call lead magnets a checklist or this or that but sometimes this part of the puzzle is often just about a really good con a good conversation sometimes it's about a good conversation across social media it's about engaging with them it's also about lead magnets that are not just automatic but actually give benefit and serve the customer how can we serve them best how can we give them um, an inkling of what we can do for them without giving away too much okay uh, but we give them enough to help them to help them get to know us to help us get to know them okay so that is the consideration piece so this actually comes back directly to this question by our lovely entrepreneur which is how can i how can i reach out to that customer that I identified so what is it that would help them most that can show you best in a small but meaningful way can it be something that you see that they have a need in something and perhaps you could share with them a process that you have that you use in that certain situation perhaps it's an invitation to something that you thought might be of use to them it might be something you're running it might be something somebody else is running how can you show yourself to them help them get to know you and get them to think twice about you to consider you um, we would like, in the, from a marketing perspective, we would like that to be an addition to our email list. It could be many other ways. But it is about engaging with them and getting them to consider you for the next stage. The last two are to be chosen, which means that they purchase from you. So perhaps that after they've tried this useful thing that you've sent them, then perhaps you can nurture them into choosing you. So. And when they choose you, you want to make sure that this, this experience, this customer experience, this onboarding experience is a really positive one and is in alignment and consistent with everything they've experienced of you already. If you automatically turn into this nightmare of someone who doesn't care because you just got their money, then you're out of alignment. So what we want to make sure that is in every step of the journey, it's respectful, it's in alignment. Well, it's like how I like to do business and it just makes sense and is consistent in how it feels to do business with you. OK, and then lastly, we come to this great piece, which is to be championed and to be championed totally changes the nature of your marketing because you then turn this funnel, which is think of it as the funnel, lots of people at the top. And then we narrow down as we get the right fit customer. But being championed means that someone has had a wonderful experience of working with you and wants to share with others how great it is to work with you. And what happens then is this funnel starts to turn. And when people love to do the work, love to work with you, whatever that is, what happens is that funnel turns into a flywheel, which helps you grow your business, which makes this idea of content generation sales, conversion, relationship building, flow more easily, flow more consistently and feel better. Um, and you don't have those concerns about what I say every time an opportunity arises. You know what you say. You start with serving. How can I best help you? And then you move on. I hope that helped for you guys today. This is episode 21 of Ask Finola How. And her question was, if you've identified a potential ideal client, what's the best way to reach out to them and say, hey, I think I can help you. And if you have any questions, let me know and I shall see you next week. Have a great day.